Hello, 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 everyone. Good afternoon. This is Judy Ann. We're back from our Easter break with our Sunday's singles chat. So we are going to be talking about financial management today. So I'm hoping that you guys will come along and join me for the ride. Along with, with me, we'll be speaking today will be Christina Buell Williams. So I am looking forward to you guys joining me. Please begin to share so that your friends can watch us from the beginning. So that would be great. So hi, Henry. Hi, Elijah, Lonnie. Hey, Christina, I'm going to bring you in. Okay, Roy. Okay. Hi, Grova. All right. All right. Hi, Miss Judy Ann. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So, what I'm going to do is just to give them a minute so that um, you know, other folks can join us. Hi, John. So, guys. Hi, Roy. If what you can do for me, that would be awesome. If you can share this live, so when we kick off, we'll have the uh, everybody um being able to follow us from the beginning. So, hi, Michelle. Hi, Paulette. So that would be great, 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 great. So uh, by the way, Christina, so I saw Paulette on there with us. Something interesting to know about her is that she has a passion for um, the young kids. And last week I watched her on a live. She was actually trying to teach young kids about uh, stocks. So um, yeah, it was uh, quite yes. <laughs> you know admirable to see her doing that. I thought that was awesome. Okay, okay. So, um, hi guys. Again, my name is Judy Ann Chung. <laughs> my name is uh, Judy Ann Chung. I am um, a co author of The Single Truth. And in addition, I'm also um, a leadership coach of Coaching You Upward. And I also have with Christina Buell Williams with me. And she is a financial advisor with Edward Jones. Um, I asked her to join me because we're going to be talking about financial. Um, management and I figure what best person to be able to um, you know give us some advice one of the reason what prompted this for me is that I had posted um, uh, I don't remember the details of the post but basically it was about finances and this gentleman basically said that one of the good uh, ways of maintaining his money is to keep it in the bank and you know as I said no no you shouldn't have too much money in the bank because then it's counterproductive but he says, no, 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 you know, inflation will not hit his money if he kept it in a bank. And I tried to convince him that that was not so, but sadly I was not successful. So I figure what better way than to actually get somebody who was the expert and qualified, because I have a financial services background and, you know, broker's life and et cetera, but I am actually not acting in that capacity. So it's better to have someone who is, um, you know, Certified professional, the whole nine yards on the expert. So here we are. So all right, guys, I see some of you have already um, shared the video. Hi, Angela. Hi, uh, author, if I missed your name while I was speaking, forgive me, but hello. But if you guys can go ahead and share the live, I think we're five minutes in now, so I guess we're going to kick off. So what I want to do first is have Christina go ahead and introduce herself and just share whatever she would like to share about herself to let you guys know. So Christina? Thanks, Judy, and I appreciate it. First of all, thank you so much for having me on. Um, definitely an honor to, to be able to, first of all, share with people. I, I truly enjoy educating people, and that's um, really where my passion and my heart is at. So I am a licensed right. financial advisor with um, Edward Jones. I've been with them for a little over um, 12 years. Um, I've been in financial services, though, a little over 20 years. So, yes, I started when I was 10 years old. <laughs> people always joke with me <laughs> about that, but... Um, but yes, going 20 years strong in the financial industry, I've seen quite um, a bit of changes in this industry. But one thing has always remained true to me. I, you know, the one thing you have to know, no matter what you do in life, you have to follow your passion and your purpose. And so um, it never was about the money right. for me, although the money is nice, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it was never about that for me. It's always been about how can I help people? Even um, when you mentioned in the beginning about me uh, educating kids, you know, I think right now that's one of the, the areas that we really miss when it comes to educating our kids. And, you know, they mm -hmm. get out of high school. They don't even know how to balance a checkbook. They don't know anything about saving, investing, 
Um, they don't know any of those sort of things. And I really do think we miss that, um, that mark with our kids. So, um, I, you know, um, I definitely, every, every client has their own unique situation. So when I build a portfolio for somebody or when I'm building their financial foundation, I'm building that based on that specific client. And I think even when you're talking about the gentleman, everybody has different risk level, everybody has different goals. So it all really comes down to that. Um, in addition to that, I am a member of, um, actually, I'm a, a coach with a group called CEO Chicks. Um, so we help women entrepreneurs all across the country. Um, I know as me being a small business owner and, and small business owners that I help all over the place, uh, we, we face different challenges. You know, being a small business owner is not for the weak at heart. <laughs> I tell people all the time. It is a battle no. every single day to get up and do it. And so... Um, but you do it based on your purpose and your passion. You don't just do it based on, uh, based on what kind of money you're going to make. And so when you follow those dreams and you follow that, that way, um, you can get through it pretty well. So CEO Chicks, I really love that part of it too, because again, it's going back to education from how do we set up our businesses? How do we get um, the right attorneys in place? How do we get our books in place? All of those things. So I'm very active also in my community, my right. church. Um, different civic organizations. Um, so I, I like being involved and I definitely like educating people. And I'm certainly pleased to be on here with you today. Right, right, right. So, so I, and, um, I have to give a shout out to Mark Chambers because he was the, when I was talking yeah. that I would love to, you know, speak with a financial advisor, he recommended you. So shout out to Mark. Thank you. I don't see you on here yet, Mark, but um, you know, if you join or listen to later on, you'll hear us, you know, acknowledging you and thanking you. All right, great. So guys, yeah, as you know, um, I do not like, a, you know, a monologue, so to speak. And I don't even, even though it's a dialogue between, um, Christina and myself, but what makes this mo more, um, grateful is if, um, uh, you guys can interact with us and you have Christina here, you know, whatever way she can answer the question, she will answer it. Um, obviously she won't go into deep details for obvious reasons <laughs> because, uh, you know, we're on a live here. <laughs> All right, guys. So, <laughs> right. So, um, so, so Christina, one of the things that we'll definitely have to take a look at is to speak about the, the th his thought process about inflation. However, we can table that at what point you are comfortable beginning to speak to that. So I think what I would love sure, to, sure. us to focus on is just like what you and I had discussed in the past in to say, okay, what is the best strategy as it relates for, you know, since our focus a lot is on singles, we can probably start from a sing, you know, when you, uh, somebody in their single status, male or female. And then if you want to, you know, share sure. if those strands send over even into a married couple, then we can go there too. So I'll turn it over to you. Absolutely. And, and definitely we're, we'll come back and address the gentleman's um, situation when it comes to inflation. But I, I will say, so the first mm -hmm. thing is when it comes to money management, period, whether you're single, whether you're a married couple, any of those sort of, sort of things, you really just have to have a good plan in place. Okay. And so, you know, I always tell people there's a five step process I follow. doesn't matter what your financial goal is. I'm going to continue to follow that same five step process. The first thing we're going to look at is where are you at right now? What does your financial situation look like right at this moment? The second thing I'm going to ask is where would you like to be? Where are we trying to go to? Okay. Um, the third thing is, can you get there? So are you setting up realistic expectations? Uh, the best example I can give of that is if if you know, if you're, um, let's say, a single individual, maybe you're making 50, 60,000 a year, but you're trying to have a three or four million dollar net worth, you basically got to be saving everything you make. And is that a realistic expectation mm -hmm. or goal for you? So, so can you get there has to be in that conversation. Um, and then, of course, how do you get there? So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then lastly, how do you stay on track? OK, and so mm -hmm. really just the foundation okay. of answering those five questions is where anybody starts. Um, then I want to say from there. Right. You have it takes discipline when you come when it comes to financial management. Period. Point blank. I have what's called a 70-30 rule. Okay, so 70-30 means that I'm going to live off 70% of, of everything that I, I make. So those are the expenses. Those are you know the bills going out the door. But 30% of that needs to be um, going towards saving or investing. And and I'm a tither and I'm a believer. So 10% of that amount goes to God. That's that's always first in my book. Um, and then 20% is what I actually put into my savings accounts and investment accounts. And so, you know, right. people ask me all the time, whether you're single or, or married, either or, 
Um, you know, I, I can't save 20 or 30 percent of what I'm making. I can't save that much. Um, and so I always come back to them. Okay, you don't have to start there, right? But where can you start? Can you start at 5%? Will right. that work for you? Mm -hmm. And then you build yourself up right. over time. But you, you know, the bottom line is we, we spend more than we have to, okay? You know, we, all of us, <laughs> we're high consumers in the United States. Let's, let's just be honest. And so if we're high consumers, okay, and we're spending this money, um, there's always there's always places you can cut in your budget to get to that point um, where you're living what I say right. in your means. And, and let's, I'm just being honest here. You, you, we, and again, I've made those mistakes. I, I remember graduating college, you know, I'm, I'm making 70, it was right around 70,000 a year from college. I go out and buy a $60,000 car, you know, the math doesn't <laughs> add up. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, Oh, you know, I'm starting to make good money. I want a really nice car. Um, but quickly I learned that I don't like car payments. <laughs> and so, so I had to, be realistic. <laughs> I had to be right. realistic. Right, and, right. and honestly, it probably wasn't until about, it probably wasn't until about two or three years, um, into, you know, really what I would say is just, we were, you know, spending and, and those sort of things where I just looked at it and, and I'm thinking, you know, at the time between me and my spouse, we were making, um, almost $150,000 a year and had nothing to show for it. And so that's when it clicked for me, okay? Uh -huh. Because how can we be making more than most people and yet we don't have a dime to save? I, I you know, we're going to the, the gas station. I'm trying to figure out which credit card to use to get gas. And so, you know, it was very <laughs> eye-opening and I had to really turn After the wheels. Listen. <laughs> So, so, so let me it interrupt happens. you one it second. Happens. So, okay, because that's is, okay. So we're talking about we're talking about we're talking about money management, right? So this is a good example. And um, you know, Christina, you go really fast, you know, because it's your world, right? But let, so yeah. let's just take it back a few st steps, right? Because you said something that was key, and this would be very helpful for the people who are on my page who are just coming out of high um, college high school, or even the people, the parents with kids who are that age at just coming out of school. So here it is, you're, back then, you're coming out of school, you're making about 70 grand, you figure that's great money for somebody just coming out of college, right? And, but what you do, you do then, you go out and you buy a $60,000 car, right? So it, it and if, if you think about it, it's not only you, there are tons and tons of us who would have also done the same thing. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the yes. reasons why conversations like this is like very, very important. So, um, so let me just look at a couple of the comments here before we go on. So Brian says, I'm sure, a banker sure. and I find that my clients who hate money have more than those who love it, but more than, but more than that, you must respect it. Yes, Brian, I completely agree with you there. Yeah. Um, let me just see if there's any, there are any other comments. Yes, we do spend more than we have. Yep. Mm hmm Okay. Paulette. Okay, no problem, Paulette. You're most welcome. Um, okay, all right. So great. Um, so again, guys, um, go ahead and share the live. Hey Joe, say Danny, Billy, Joe, Jerome, Robert, <laughs> James. Okay. So just to um you know, continue on. Um, but again, you know, as I said, so from a financial management point, you're talking about your three step plan. So Go on. Yes. So again, just as a whole, kind of going through that five-step plan, it is it is more about you have to make a decision. Okay. I think in life, everything comes down to what your choice is. And so for me, at that point in my life, the choice was I, I didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck anymore. And so I got myself mm -hmm. on a plan. I got my family on a plan in order to make sure that we got into a better financial position. But Again, going back to just right. a decision. When we make a decision for God, it's a decision. You have to change your mind. It's the same thing when it comes to money. You have right. to change your mind. And so 70-30 is my right. rule. You're going to live off 70%. You're going to tithe 10% of your tither. And then you're going to save 20% of everything you make. Okay? So now, once we've got right. that concept down. So... Um, I, you know, Dave Ramsey says it all the time. He put it in his book, you know, pay yourself first. That's got to be a priority um, when it comes to saving for the future, saving for anything. Okay. Um, every single month mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make a mortgage payment. We'll make, um, 
the electric payment. And then after everybody else gets paid, then we pay ourselves, right? And you have to right. not do that. I mean, it, it really has to be a, a choice and a decision to change to say, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is, is tithe if that's who you are. And the very next thing I'm going to do is pay myself. So if, if my goal is I'm right. saving 5%, 10%, or 20% of my income, that goes to savings immediately, okay? And then we can start <laughs> to build from that, that foundation. But if you don't get that part first, let me just say it that way. If you don't get the decision part first to pay to, to be the first person you pay, um, the rest of it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. It just is. I mean, I, I would love to sugarcoat it and say, oh, it's, it's, you can do it after the fact, but you really can't. You have to save first. Right. Um, and then you do. You have to right. you, you, you build from there. I'm a very big component that you should build an emergency fund, um, which is usually cash at the bank, Okay. But there is a mm -hmm. point when you have too much cash at the bank. And so realistically, somewhere between three to six months of your income, you should have in the bank. And even for me, even that money that sits in, in the bank, I'm using that money in a money market account. I usually buy CDs because I want that money to earn interest for me. Okay. So I don't want it just to right. sit there and do nothing. Um, you know, I had a, somebody bring me a hundred thousand dollars that uh, a statement, a hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank. They made two cents last year, two. <laughs> okay, so you know, realistically, Are you, kidding me? you didn't lose anything. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was it. So you, you didn't lose anything, but I had to have that conversation. <laughs> okay, first of all, you know, how many times do you go to the bank and you need a hundred grand? Most right. people don't. <laughs> okay, so I asked. Okay, what's the largest amount you've ever taken out of the bank at one time? His happened to be somewhere around seven thousand. Great. Right. Let's double that. Let's let's leave about fifteen thousand dollars just in cash. But the rest of it, let's either move to a money market or a CD. You can do a six month, a one year, just something to get you earning a little bit more interest. And again, right. it's not gonna blow it out of the water. I mean, those rates are only between one and two percent, but at least you're earning, mm -hmm. you know, at a hundred thousand dollars, you could have earned a thousand dollars versus two right. cents. So, right. you know, that's, that's really my philosophy. And, and for the banks, the, you know, up to a certain limit, those are FDIC insured. Um, so you have some, mm -hmm. some safe contingencies there. Uh, but definitely you still got to, you, you just can't leave the money just sitting in cash. Um, right. You know, those days have to change. And I will say, you know, for, for single people, for entrepreneurs, even for our own culture, okay? You know, I had a great conversation when I first started my career with my grandmother no lie, she definitely used to keep money in the mattress. <laughs> okay? And so, and a lot of money, okay? My grandmother was that. She's, she's, she's a wonderful woman, but she would. You know, she would, have, she would have lots of money in the mattress. And so we had a real conversation about, you know, I mean, God forbid you got robbed, the house burned right. down, any of those right. sort of things. That money is gone, you know? And so I think it's, it's, it was a culture shift for her, but you know what? Right. She eventually opened a, a, a CD and put that money into a CD. And so right, I, right. I say that because we can change people's minds. We can, but you have to have that conversation. It's about education. If my 75 right. year old grandmother who has spent the last 50 years putting money in the mattress can see the wisdom in that, I know it's all it is, it's about education. Right, right. <laughs> so let, let, let's, just, let's just pause right there. Because what you just said is key, right? Because at the end of the day, financial management comes down to the first thing that you said that I heard you said, and I know to be true, is your mindset. And usually, a lot yeah. of times, sometimes, and people may get a little bit upset with this statement that I'm about to make, but it is true if you take the time to research it, is that a lot of times, poverty has a lot to do with your mindset or poor money management yes. or living paycheck to paycheck has a lot to do with your mindset and ultimately how your relationship with money and that influences your your you know your thoughts how you manage it how you buy it how you invest it or not invest it you know whatever it is that you do so yeah right. i just wanted to stress that point that you just made is key if her 90 year old grandmother could take her money from under the mattress and i'm sure we can all relate to that right <laughs> of having a grandmother <laughs> yeah. who you know did that back in the days right and um you know if you can relate to that if she can shift 
And whether it goes to a CD or even a more sophisticated instrument, I think, right. you know, listen, there is hope for the rest of us that are a lot younger. All righty, Christine, back over to you. Thank you. Uh, so, so let's just kind of, I want to jump though to your, to your gentleman about inflation. So about, right. you know, him leaving his money just in the bank, um, not investing it because of inflation risk or those sort of things. So, you know, one of my, one of my biggest things is that, first of all, your money earning nothing is still at risk. Okay. Because we all know the cost of things has gone up. You can look through history and see, you know, um, when I graduated high school, I paid a dollar. It was literally 98 cents for gas, a gallon, right? Mm -hmm. That's not the same today, okay? It's, it's tripled right. in that time frame. And so whether it's milk, whether it's cars, you know, my dad used to tell me he paid more for his last car than he did for his first house, okay? So the cost of things have increased, whether you want to believe right. it or not. And so you can save, and I'm not saying that you cannot save um, and leave money in the bank, but the ultimate thing is you are putting yourself at inflation risk. If inflation right. is growing, let's say 2 to 3% every year, and your money is not keeping up with that, at some point, you're, one or two things are going to happen. You're either going to have to work harder to save more, okay, mm -hmm. or you're going to be working a lot longer. And, right. you know, I have much respect for, um, you know, people in their 75s and 80s that are, you know, maybe bagging groceries or at Walmart or those sorts of things. I have a lot of respect for those people because they're hard workers. But I guarantee right. you, if you go back and ask them what would it would have changed in their life, 90% of the time it comes down to, I would have done something different with my money during that time frame. And so right. I, I say to that, there is definitely a place for cash in the bank, 100%. Have that emergency fund. Um, but ultimately, trying to achieve your goals long term, you do have to invest your money. So in the finance world, we, we call this the rule of 72. So Basically, if you take any, any interest rate and divide it by 72, that is roughly how long it takes your money to double in value. So mm -hmm. let's just do some math here. If I have $10,000 and I'm getting a 1% rate of return at the bank, it's going to take my money 72 years to double in value. Okay. <laughs> so that 10,000 was not going to be 20,000 for 72 years. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't have 72 years. <laughs> no, exactly. Maybe you just want to have it. But I'm no, not no, sure no. I do, okay. <laughs> um, but what I will say, okay, is that, you know, and again, you don't have to be overly aggressive. You can build a balanced portfolio, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit. But if you get mm -hmm. just, let's say, uh, uh, 8 to 10%, I'll just use 10% for easy math. You get roughly mm -hmm. a 10% rate of return. Um, same rule as 72, it will take your money about seven years to double in value. And so, right. you know, that's more along my time frame. I need my money to be working for me because I don't, I don't want to work forever. I love what I do. I'm passionate about it. But I know for me, my gifting is to pass this on to the next generation of financial advisors, specifically female, um, you know, minority event, uh, financial advisors. That's my goal. That's my vision. That's where I know I'm meant to, to be long term. So I have to get my money to work a little harder for me to hit those goals. Um, right. So again, speaking back to, to this gentleman, it's not, in my opinion, it, having money and cash in the bank is highly important because you've got to have quick access to it. But long term, you got to really be able to expand your horizon outside of that. And right. it comes back to don't, you know, don't invest all your eggs in one basket. Totally understand that. Um, I'm never going to buy just one stock and, and hope that all of my dreams come available on that one <laughs> stock. I don't, I don't want to do that. Okay. But if I build no. a good, solid, diversified portfolio um, and I'm investing that way, that's perfectly fine. For me personally, right. I definitely have investments. I deal with stocks every day. So that's what I do. But we also have real estate investing. I've also got business opportunities that I'm trying to invest in. So I've expanded mm -hmm. that all over um, so that I right. have a good mix in different areas. Right. So, you know, going back to that inflation question, that, that's, you know, I personally don't want to work that hard forever. <laughs> right. So that's right. So, why I want so... my money to work harder for me. I think Warren right. Buffett said it best. I need to be making money while I sleep. Okay. Yeah. And that's highly important to me. <laughs> Okay, so I won't call out the gentleman's name. I won't put him on the spot. But if you're listening to <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. please know that she said you would have to at least wait till 72 years from now 
So until your money have some kind of sizable, he said doubling it, right? Until your money were, was able to be yeah. doubled. So Double. I don't know about Just you, and the last time I checked, you know, we're not that young. <laughs> so I'm not sure we have 72 yeah. years to wait, right? <laughs> so no, I hope yes. this helps you. Okay. All right, so let me, hey guys, just so you know, if you have any questions that you want to ask Christina, please feel comfortable um, to and free to do so. Um, she will try her best to answer them as best she can. All right, so we are continuing on with our steps. Back to you, Got Christina. It. So, mm -hmm. so um, I think the next thing I want to talk about is in regards to kind of, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, well, what kind of investments do you pick or how do you, how do, you do that? And so, mm -hmm. again, this really comes down to probably um, three major things. Number one, you got to look at your age. How much time do you have to invest, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the future? So if it is, you know, if you're trying to invest for maybe um, one or two years, yeah, maybe it does make sense to do more money market account or CD account, something like that. If you're trying to invest a little bit longer um, because you're doing retirement, maybe five years, 10 years, or even longer than that, um, then, you, then you can start looking at outside investments, including bonds, um, mutual funds, stocks, um, all of those things across the board. But the biggest part that I will say that is because you're going to look at your age, how much time do you have? Number two, you want right. to look at your risk level. What, what, how much risk are you willing to take? That's a very real question. You know, we have a, a very volatile stock market at the moment. And so, you know, that's kind of after being very positive for the last 10 years. And so I think people have kind of got back to that euphoria a little bit about how well the market has done. And so, you know, it's my job as, as, a, as a coach, if I could say it that way, it's my job mm -hmm. to, to kind of set you back to reality. You know, the market that we've had over the last 10 years, that's not a normal market. And we need to be prepared for if the market drops 10% or 20%, how are you right. going to react? And you have mm -hmm. to have real conversations about that in order to build a, a good portfolio. So your risk, your risk level is going to matter. Um, there's many right. questions to ask around that, but, but you know what your risk level is. I mean, I, I did a, a Facebook feed a couple of weeks ago um, about my, my brother was going to jump off a bridge. We were in New Zealand. And he was going to jump off a bridge doing the bungee jumping. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, but for me, no, I'm not jumping off a perfectly good bridge. Yeah. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> and so it was exciting. Don't get me wrong. But we have different li risk levels, right? His right, risk right. Level is, he's going for it. Me, I'm probably a little bit more medium conservative. And so right. when it comes to investing, we're probably very similar in that. He's probably going to be a lot more aggressive than I am. I'm going to be more mm -hmm. in that medium range. And it really comes down to, if that's where I'm at, individual person, then I need to build my portfolio around that. You need to have a combination of things, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you've got to have some conservative investments, which usually do include like bonds, CDs, those sort of things. You've got to right. have those good quality, um, what I like to call blue chip stocks. Um, those are the companies that you know every day. We see them all the time. And so those companies typically do well over, long, you know, over a three to five year period and even longer term. And then you mm -hmm. may want to invest in some things that are riskier. Um, I mean, I get a lot of questions about those riskier investments all the time because they're hot in the news. And I get that, right. okay? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, the old boring plane investments, those are typically what do the best over time, okay? Right. So build right. a balanced portfolio. Right. Before you go on, so, because this whole risk thing is very important, right? And it's unique for everybody. Everybody's story is different. So... Like, um, yeah. I love the example of the, uh, the bunch of jumping with your son. Uh, and yes, I opted not to do that there either. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, I can imagine that. And I saw your pictures too. Awesome. So, um, to take it back with, um, the example for risk, just to give a, 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 a even a real life example, um, say for instance, if I'm a mom, a single mom, and I have, I don't know, kids, that you know one may be in college one is on the way to college um like and i know you can't give hard you know concrete uh, examples sure, but just sure. hypothetically right? um so give the example of a person like that versus say a single woman with no kids it's just her right so compare those two right. in terms of what are the different kind of risk that those two women would have to evaluate for themselves if you will so here is the thing so regardless when you're looking at those two type of women so maybe somebody does have some kids going off to college and those sort of things it really depends the primary reason that they're trying to save if 
for both of them, they're trying to save, let's say for retirement, we're going to base mm -hmm. their risk level around that retirement goal. Okay. Right. If they're saving for college and they got one that's in college and one that's on the way, that's probably a shorter term time frame. So the risk right. level is probably going to be a little bit lower. They don't want to lose that money. And so right. I say this to say, you know, the bottom line is if you invest your money, ask yourself, what is the, what is the worst scenario? What is the, the most amount you're willing to lose? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so realistically, if I said, I'm trying to save for, for my retirement, I want to invest this $10,000. Okay. I'm going to ask you as a financial advisor, okay, are you comfortable with this $10,000 dropping a thousand dollars? So your account goes to 9,000. Are you going to pick up the phone and call me during that time? Or are you going to be okay? Okay. Right. And then I go, right. I go further. They say, yes, I'm, I'm fine with a thousand. I understand it's going to fluctuate. No problem. Then we're going to ask the next question. What if it goes down by $2,000? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people start squirming in their, their, their seat a little bit, losing $2,000. Right. Um, you know, and then again, going even further, what if it went down $3,000? Well, I, I'd probably mm -hmm. call you and tell you that we should do something else. So you have to be real. So when we're picking out the right risk level, you really have to think about what am I willing to lose? Now, the stock market over time has always gained that back, okay? Um, again, we don't know. I can't predict what the future will bring. But what I will mm -hmm. say is that you need to be, you definitely need to have a comfort level. I'm talking about $10,000, but honestly, I deal with people that have $100,000 or a $1 million um, in the market. And so I have to say, you're giving me a $1 million. Are you, are you okay with losing $100,000? If this market went down $100,000, would you be okay with that? You know, most people have to look at me and say, wait a second, I've spent my lifetime building this, this right. money. I'm not sure I'm willing to go um, or lose $100,000. And so we have to have those, those real conversations. Right. Again, mm -hmm. doesn't mean we're not going to be in the stock market. It just means you don't put as much in. Maybe you buy right. more conservative investments and just a little bit in the stock market. Uh, because the, still, the bottom line is we still got to keep up with inflation. And I don't, especially if somebody's approaching retirement or getting to that point, we want to make sure long term they have that money. So mm -hmm. even for, uh, and I'm going to say out here, you know, for me, um, when it comes to helping like, you know, single people or even single mothers for that, for that reason, um, again, we're going to focus on what the main goal is. If it is retirement, we're going to, we're going to focus on that. A lot of times in their scenarios, it does come down to, to protecting the assets because they right. don't want to protect a lot of what they made. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're a lot of times solely supporting somebody, or even if you're single, I find, you know, a lot of my single friends, they're helping out on their families a whole lot. And so they're right. helping take care of their mom and their dad and those sort of things. And those are very real scenarios. And so mm -hmm. um, when I look at that, that case, they do want to protect what they're making. And so I'm not saying, you know, be aggressive. Let's put 100% in the market and hope it all grows. No, usually we're saying, okay, let, let's, let's earn maybe 5 or 6% on these investments and be, you know, then put the other things in the, the stock market at that point in time. So right. every scenario is different. Like I said, it's all about balance and you build your, mm -hmm. your portfolio based on that. Right. So if I heard you correctly, it's not only about um, the risk level, but ultimately it also includes your objective and the timeline to your objective. Oh, okay, good. Absolutely. All right, guys. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, all right, guys, so I'm not seeing any major questions here. So, Christina, um, Alfonso, I adore money so much. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, Brian is also. I adore also... money too, Alfonso. I just don't like Right? <laughs> so do I. <laughs> okay. I do love money. I, 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 I would confess I have not met too. anybody yet that just tells me they hate money. Okay. Right. Um, I've not met one person yet that's told me. I, I ask it all the time. Um, but listen, I mean, we're all, we all work hard and, and I, you know, I work with some great advisors. I, you know, work with a lot of entrepreneurs. I know people work hard. It is, you know, it, it just goes back to, you know, they say the average millionaire has seven streams of income, right? And many of right. us aspire to be millionaires, right? So what are you doing mm -hmm. to get to your seven streams of income? Okay. What, you know, definitely my business, as far as financial advisor, that's definitely one of my streams of income. But again, mm -hmm. my second stream of income is how is that money making money? <laughs> okay. Right. So how is the money that I'm saving making money? That's my second stream of income. And then I look, mm -hmm. like I said, outside, what are other business opportunities I can invest in? What are other real estate opportunities I can invest in? Again, it all depends on where you want to go. But I, I agree with the, the gentleman. You know, I, I adore money. I, I do. I just don't let right. it control me. <laughs> I, I, I think the only person that would probably ever say they hate money is if somebody who does not have any money. <laughs> That's the only person. 
You're that's right. the only conclusion that's that I could come to. That's right? the only person I okay. know. <laughs> right? Okay. So uh, Brian says, I teach wealth management and I teach investment strategy. Everything she's saying is a great plan to build wealth. Awesome. Thank you, um, Brian, for that. Um, okay. Thank you, Ryan. So thank you, Ronnie. All right, then. So um, uh, yeah. All right. So there, Trina. All right. That's perfect. Good. I'm happy you guys are liking what uh, Christina is saying. So Christina, um, let's continue on with your plan. So guys, just to, um, for those of you who have just joined, I did see a, a few um, new names pop up. Um, so Christina is just basically giving us, um, you know, step-by-step -step process in how the best outlook to look at your, um, your money. Um, be, I mean, we were focusing on mostly singles, but quite frankly, what she's giving you can be stretched across the board single or married. It really doesn't matter because at the end yeah. of the day, it is really sound financial management advice that she is sharing with us in terms of her overall strategy. So we were just, you know, taking a look at risk a second ago and she's going to take it from there to go on. Back to you. Absolutely. And so, because I know a couple of you have um, joined on here, I'm, I'm going to restate what that kind of five-step process is. Um, so right. it's looking at where you're at today. You've got to kind of have a good idea of where you're at. Where would you like to be? What's the end goal? Mm -hmm. Can you right. get there? So you've got to set realistic expectations and goals for yourself. Um, and then how do you get there and how do you stay on track? So we've kind of covered right. those first three questions. Where are you at? Where are you at today? Where would you like to be? And can you get there? So we, we've kind of established those. How do you get there? So, you know, I'm, I'm a component for whatever I don't know, I seek out a professional to help me with that, okay? I often meet with attorneys. I often meet with CPAs, um, whatever it is. I mean, I want an expert in that area in order to help me. And so whether it is a family friend that you just know is really great with money, okay, or you seek out a financial advisor um, or, or a team, whatever it is, I will tell you to seek wisdom when you're trying to build your financial future. My thing is, is the best athletes in the world still have a coach, okay? Um, you know, when Tiger Woods was at the top of his game, he still had a coach um, to right. help him look at his golf swing. Sometimes somebody looking inside – you can't see everything because you're in the weeds every day, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have somebody assess you from outside of that, that environment, they can see things that you can't see. Even me as a professional, I have a, I have a, um, a personal business coach. I even have a life coach, right? I have both mm -hmm. because I think that it's so important for somebody to see, um, to see what I can't see, what I've got blinders onto, if I can say it that way. Right. So I'm going to say over and over, you really do need to seek um, good professional advice. You know, the word says, you know, seek wisdom. And I'm going to mm -hmm. say you, you really have to seek wisdom from somebody that's done it. And so that's the, the, how do you get there? So in order to really build a good financial plan, you know, definitely use the, how do you get there and then staying on track. So the biggest mistake most people make when it comes to finances is they set things up and they never go back and readjust. <laughs> okay. So I don't know about you guys, but I know in my world, I always have emergencies that come up. <laughs> okay. I have you know, two teenage kids. Um, I'm running a business. There's lots I got going on. And so no matter what, no matter, even when I think I have planned or laid out the best laid plans, period, it always mm -hmm. comes back that I have forgotten a detail, right? right? Something happens in my life that turns everything upside down. And so I'm saying that to say, you really, you got to come back and review. Number one, try to plan for those unexpected things. But number two, you got to come back and review where you're at even from the beginning of this year. So I started January, we had set goals in our business and both in, and personally, um, but here I am three months later and I'm looking and I'm reevaluating um, those goals because guess what? Are we on track to meet them? Do we need to adjust them? Has something changed? And we have to do those things. My budget is about to change. I've got a child going to college. My budget mm -hmm. is about to, to change a lot. <laughs> so I need to adjust. For those things, it's not going to be the whole year, uh, but it's, it's across the board. I mean, um, protection is, is very key when you're mm -hmm. planning for your financial future. If somebody's mm -hmm. relying on your income uh, for their future, if I could say it that way, you really got to consider um, insuring yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, for me, I know in my family, my business is, is what provides for us. Okay. Right. So if something happened to me, that would completely go away. All right. And so I have to step up and say, okay. 
I need to ensure my life because I don't want their life changed. God forbid something happened to me. And, right. And we all have scenarios where something major has happened. And you have to address that when it comes to um, how you stay on track. So it's just about planning and understanding that those things, there are things that are going to throw you off track. The minute you, you know, some of you on here, whether you're single or single mom, some of you haven't really saved anything yet. And you're saying, I really need to start my savings plan and I'm going to get on track and I'm going to start saving 20% of what I make. And, and if nothing else, I'm going to get a thousand dollars in the bank, whatever it is. Many of you I know right now online are saying that. And so mm -hmm. guess what? The minute you make that decision, I promise you something is going to pop up to throw you off track. Okay, right. something's going to happen. Right. Your car's going to need new tires. There's going to be a medical expense, something. Okay, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. tell you in advance know that they're going to come. That's okay. That doesn't need to derail you from where you're trying to go. Okay, right. So if nothing else, try to stay the course. Those expenses will still be there. All right, make sense? Right, <laughs> right. Okay, so the, as awesome, I mean, I listen, look, I good advice is just good advice. There's really not much to add to that. This was great advice. But I want to yeah. add now a couple of comments here. So um, okay. Muggy Mac says, is it for the love of money or for what money affords you to do or magnifies about you? Um, you know, Muggy Mac, um, you can look at it either way. But um, I, I'm assuming that you, you know, um, your reference to us, us loving money. But the thing about it, if we love money and you manage it um, effectively, it does afford you to do um, a lot of things that you want to do, and it does magnify the things that you can do. Because let's face it, if I want to build a recreation center or if I want to, um, you know, fly around the world, quite frankly, you know, whether I love money or I don't love money, if I don't have the money, I can't do it. So, you know, it just comes back to that. But I get your point. So Sydney's asking, um, what do you think about, you know, the whole crypto um, coin market? Um, I don't know if you want to speak to that, I guess, in general terms. Sure, sure. So let me go, let me first go back, though, to the gentleman before I got the Adore money. Um, so oh. I, let me say that real quick before I go on to the cryptocurrency. So let me, I will say, you know, anybody that knows me, and I think depending on what circles you're in and those sort of things, you know, I work with money every day. I see it all the time. I've seen people have a lot of money. I've seen people have a little money. Doesn't matter, okay? But one of the things mm -hmm. that I know for me, Again, it's about following your purpose and your passion. So in addition to what I do and talking about money and even making money, you know, I separately have my own passion about just educating um, the next generation about money. I have foundations that I donate to. I have a personal goal that, you know, I talked about that 70% that I live off of. So I have a mm -hmm. personal goal to give away 50% of my income um, to charities and things like that. So again, I think it all depends. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I want my children to experience great vacations. I want us to have, you know, a, a nice household, those sort of things. But I, right. I don't, I don't over exaggerate it. I'm not going out, no matter if I can afford it or not afford it. I'm not going out and buying a multi-million dollar home because that's not where my passion is. That's not what I want to do. I would rather right. have the experience with my children. I would rather have be able to give back to my community. And those are the things that are important to me. So it, it's about it's about what you're serving and who you're serving, if I can say it that way. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's go to the cryptocurrency. Okay. Mm -hmm. So cryptocurrency. So I'm gonna say this like I would say any investment advice at all. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you an opinion whether I love them or hate them, okay? But what I wanna say is this is that all investments have risk. Okay, and you need to understand that risk. So have I invested in riskier things that I may or may not have turned out to be something good or bad? Absolutely. But I need to understand up front what that means. When you're investing in something that is new and does not have a track record just yet, you have to be willing to say, is the amount of money that I'm investing in this, um, if it goes to zero, am I okay with that? Okay. Right. And so again, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And that's just the risk of investing. So when people ask me about cryptocurrencies and those sort of things, my response is if you're passionate about it and you feel like that's where you should invest, that's, that is definitely okay. But I would only say, number one, invest only what you're willing to risk. And number two, that should not be all you're investing in. So it shouldn't be like your right. entire life savings went into that. And, and we've seen the volatility there um, to represent that. Now, you know, go back 20 years. We had no idea. Look, look how easy it is for us to chat online and, and talk to people. You couldn't do this 20 years ago. 
okay? Um, I was on a vacation with my kids and we saw a payphone. They had no idea what a payphone was. And so <laughs> my, my technology has certainly changed, okay? And, and that has definitely changed um, throughout, throughout uh, our life. And so I say that to say, you know, I don't know where the next area is going to. I don't know if cryptocurrency is going to be the next big thing. I personally don't know that. But that doesn't mean right. I'm going to tell somebody not to invest in it. I mean, if somebody had, would have told me, you know, 15 years ago about Facebook, I mean, I remember people telling me about Facebook. I was like, eh, yeah, I may get on that thing. I may not. And now here we are with billions of people <laughs> on Facebook. And so right, you, know, you, right. have to, you have to weigh the, the pros and cons for your life. Um, again, I would never tell anybody not to invest in something. If you know about it, if you can understand the risk, if that's the investment you want to make, that is more than fine. Just understand what you're willing to lose. Right. And I think one of the key things that I heard there, apart from it's not, it's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's a matter of fact of education yourself, understanding um, what you have to be able to um, invest in and also understanding the, your, your level of risk that you can afford to expose yourself to. And then mm -hmm. I think the other thing that I also heard you said was diversification. You know, um, it, yeah. well, it was somewhat implied. That's what I got in terms of, because again, yeah. you have other things, right? So that could be another mm -hmm. level of diversification that you have there, whether you have the CDs, the cash in the bank, um, the investment in a mutual fund, um, real estate, um, external business venture, and you said insurance, which is actually very critical, especially for single folks, single mothers, single fathers, is very important. Quite frankly, it's important for even married folks too, um, because, yeah. you know, as you said, especially if there's this one income, you need to have that there. So I do think that is key when it comes to financial management. So everybody's giving you a lot of thumbs up, a lot of um, awesome advice. So guys, I know you love the advice Christina has given out, and so do I. Give her some hearts. Trust me, she more than deserves it because um, this is awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so Rose says, I want to be able to serve without worrying about my finances. Um, you know what, Rose? I, I think that's an awesome thing. And I, I do think, um, you know, working with probably somebody, <laughs> I'm going to uh, advertise you, Christine, you're here with me, Christina. Sorry. Um, you know, I'm sure that you guys can get in contact with her afterwards and she'd be more than happy uh, to work with you. I do work in the financial service industry, so Rose, but that's not what I do. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. And, and I know Rose, Rose is one of our women from the, our CEO chick group. Um, oh, okay. Love. And so, um, Rose, we'll definitely connect. We'll, we'll definitely connect. I know we haven't yet, but, um, you know, it, I agree with you. It, it, to serve without worrying about finances. I mean, the moment that my mind could shift and I didn't have to worry about money anymore. And, and again, I don't, I don't want to say I still don't make money, but I don't sit and worry about it. How are my bills going to get paid? What's in the bank? Account? I don't worry about that, that anymore. It is an automatic, I mean, um, flow in our household. And so, um, the moment that that shifts for you, you actually, you do get freed up. So there's a financial freedom that comes with it. But honestly, the bottom line is it just comes to discipline and what you're doing. And so it can happen right, for right. anybody. It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter if you're making 30000 a year or, or 200000 a year. It can happen for anybody. It just depends on what you're willing to sacrifice in that situation. Right. And I love the comment by Muggy Mac here. It says, Christina... Fabulous example of financial goals underpinning your passion, um, simply awesome. So I, I, I have to second that one too. Because um, one of the things here, which obviously is not specific to the whole financial management, but it is indirectly, um, because Christina not just spoke about um, giving you pointers in terms of the, you know, the five stage, stage plan strategy for financial management for your life, but she also spoke about her passion and she also spoke about how she'd be able to finance her passion. And at the beginning, she said money was not the driver. You know, the driver was to be able to help to do, um, you know, what she wants to do in terms of educating people. And this is one of the, believe it or not, she's really offered a lot of very um, solid, um, critical advice that I think will be helpful for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's something to be said about the mindset. You know, it, it's like one of those ha-ha moments when you said, as you said, you know, it's not that you, oh, I'm so rich, I don't have to worry about money. And, you know, there's a difference between being financially stable and solid so you can do the things that yes. you want to do 
And in some cases, it doesn't mean that you are not being responsible. And it doesn't mean that you're still not right. going to the people who have the wisdom, um, you know, to get the necessarily advice that you want. Because I think wisdom goes all across your life, whether it be personal, you know, financial, emotional, et cetera, et cetera. There always would be people that would have better knowledge than you do. All righty. So um, let me just see if there's anything else I just acknowledge. Hey, Carl, how are you guys doing, Silas? How are you guys doing also? Um, Brandon, Cynthia, Tony, Fred, Sandy. Okay. All right, guys. So I am going to turn it back to Christina so she can um, continue sharing with us. Sure, sure. So, I mean, just to kind of, you know, wrap it up, if I could put it in a pretty bow, <laughs> if I could say it that way. Um, right. You know, again, I want to kind of go back to what I said in the beginning. It, it comes down to a decision. Um, financial freedom, financial management, whatever you want to call it, money management, um, you know, it really comes down to the decision you want to make. Um, right. it, there's a lot of discipline that comes when you're saving, when you're investing. Um, I definitely don't want to sugarcoat that at all. But I will right. say... When you make the decision to change your mind, it's really mm -hmm. when you get yourself into a better financial position. Um, again, I, I equate it all the time to my decision to live for God, right? Because the moment I made that decision, okay, right. every choice after that I have to make that is in an environment that is going to be right. pleasing to God, right? Mm -hmm. it's the same thing when it comes to your financial decisions. If you're going to make a decision today that, hey, I want to be financially free, then every decision that you make after this has to mm -hmm. equate to that. That means that, right. guess what? You can't stop at Starbucks every morning on your way to work anymore because you're right. going to become financially free. <laughs> okay? right. That means that, guess what? You know, for me, I had to do the, the cash management system for a while, which meant that, you know, I had a budget. It was $100 a week, okay? And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is I could only spend $100 a week outside of my normal expenses, Okay, so right. I was eating out on lunch. That was even included my gas at the time. And again, this was 10 years ago. So, uh, you know, 15 years ago, roughly. So definitely different time. Okay. Right. But what I say to that is, you know, $100 goes fairly fast. <laughs> okay. <And> so, <laughs> but if I ran out of that $100 on Tuesday and I had to wait till maybe Saturday to get my budget back again, I didn't have money to spend between Wednesday and Saturday. And so, right. again, it comes down to that financial decision. And it, there is definitely for all of us, you know, whether you're making a lot, whether you're, you know, not making that much, whether you're single, whether you're married, I want to say across the board, that decision is so critical. Um, we live in an environment where instant gratification is what we love. So we want everything right, right now, okay? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm teaching my kids all the time. I have a 16 and 17-year-old, and I know y'all bear with me, please. <laughs> we pray for you. That I, I am trying so hard to instill into them that, you know what, when you work hard for something, you're going to appreciate mm -hmm. it that much more. But then, honestly, right. in society, we're not teaching that anymore, okay? That's and true. you really have to do that when it comes to your finances, You've got to make those decisions, those little decisions each and every day that puts you in a better financial position. <laughs> Whether, like I said, if you want to look for ways to save, one of the biggest ways I'm going to tell you is you got to review your budget. I, you know, if you bring me your budget, I'm going to chop it up. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> because there's things that you have that you don't need. Okay. Right. I have lived Thank without you. cable for almost 10 years. All right. Wow. So mm -hmm. you can't tell me that cable is a necessity. Okay. Because right. do I need internet? Yes, I do need internet because of what I do. But nowadays, between like Hulu, between Netflix, between all the things and opportunities that are out there, um, I don't miss any shows at all. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, nothing. And so right, I right. would say, you know, realistically, you know, nowadays people spend around eighty to one hundred dollars a month on cable that could afford somebody a very nice retirement, all right? And so right. imagine those things over time. You know, turn your AC up from 75 to 78. I know some of you in the north. I know I'm in the south. So if some of you in the north <laughs> don't have that problem, we do have that problem here um, in the all Florida right. region. And so those are little minor things that make a big difference in your budget. But again, um, if you bring me a budget, and even I ask for a budget and bank statement, because I'm going to verify that your budget and bank statement match, okay? Mm -hmm. And so when you do those things, 
um, it, you know, I'm going to really ask you to be disciplined in that scenario. And some of those things that we buy on a regular basis, um, they have to get cut out. They just have to go away, you know, and, and if you're going to be serious about it. So it really comes back to the decision that you make. And once you've right. done that, work through the process. I gave that five-step process a couple of times. You guys can always go back and watch this feed later. Uh, but that mm -hmm. process really does help you get to the next level. Work with a professional. Find somebody. Um, you know, if you want to reach out to me, you don't know with somebody in your area or you want to reach out to me directly, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I am licensed in most states across the United States, so I can certainly help you. Um, but again, even, and I tell people all the time, even if we're not the right fit, find somebody that is a good fit for you okay right. Um, right. sometimes you're not the right fit for people and that's okay there are there are thousands of other advisors out there let me refer you to a good one and that way you mm -hmm. can get your financial needs met um, but right. ultimately once you've done those steps get you know begin to, to really think about what does my future look like you know i am i am definitely an optimist um mm -hmm. by nature by all means i always see Okay, here's what the positive is going to be in this scenario. You know, right. um, even, for, even for, you know, I, my friends will come to me and be like, oh, you know, I lost my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm like, wait a second, you got freed up to do some more opportunities? That is great. Right? You know, here, you know I'm, and again, I'm the eternal optimist. Listen, we can figure out a way to make money if that is the, the issue. But you have mm -hmm. to really think about if you're trying to get to a million dollars, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of vision boards. That's on my vision board. Hey, this is what I need to get to. Um, see it every day and then equate it in your mind. What decisions do I got to make to get there? Right, right. Okay, wonderful. So I, I do think that um, this has been quite good. We're about two minutes before the hour. And um, I just want to, um, you know, first say thank you for um, just taking the time to talk to us. I think this was great. I think it was quite insightful and helpful. Um, and it, one of the things you did indirectly, um, you also helped me by telling people how important it is to have a coach. <laughs> because obviously, oh, yeah. with me being a leadership coach, <laughs> so thank you. That, <laughs> okay, touche, right? Um, you've just paid it forward and you didn't even realize it, right? But anyway, so with oh, me being a leadership awesome. coach, um, so basically you heard, you know, another professional here say how important it is to have a coach. So guys, um, uh, I'm a leadership coach also. I do focus on emerging leaders and also on single women in terms of, uh, you know, revisioning, getting your life back, refocusing, going after your passion, similar to, you know, some of the things that Christina um, spoke about. So as you can see, there are even synergies, even though we're in two different areas, but there are synergies ultimately towards success and ultimate towards leadership and management of your life. So with that having said, I'm just going to see if there are any other last questions. Muggy Max, a live for God, boom. And you know what? There's one thing that I want to point out here. So obviously Christina is a Christian and so am I. So we do talk about and do, do advocate for tithing. Um, so, you know, again, that is something that for me, I'm going to give, give you a quick story. Um, I was laid off once and I, you know, was like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I do? Now, I do manage my life in such a state that, okay, if I get laid off, I do have my emergency funds. I'm not sitting here, oh, woe is me. Having said that, though, right. I remember tithing on my unemployment. <laughs> so they thought I was crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did. You know, so people were like, are you nuts? I was like, it's income, right? And it didn't phase me. Yeah, right. And it really didn't phase me because as you said, it's a mindset, but everybody, you know, is not there and it is a process. And if yeah. that is something, if you're a Christian, is that something that you're struggling for? I can definitely testify to you that having done that, then I got a job where I was, um, I work in institutional, um, uh, you, know, you know, institutional investment banking. So this was on the retail side, right? So, I, because right, I had right. the series 24, 7, whatever it was, you know, when the, the, the dot coms, the trading dot coms were up there. So this firm needed somebody with a series 24 right. license, right? So he says, oh, well, guess what? I said, well, I don't know anything about retail trading. I'm more on the institutional side. He says, we just need a 24. We don't want to be shut down. So that man was willing to offer me this paycheck of what I envisioned. And I'm like, wow. oh, gosh. But I was tithing on my unemployment. So guys, we're not here to try to convert you. I'm just telling you, you know, a genuine story. This is a real life story. This actually happened. Um, 
So again, it is a mindset, but it's a way of life. And it's, it, it, we have combined it. I can speak, say we, because obviously you've heard Christina said it. We have yeah. combined that with also the strategy for our lives to be able to have a stable financial um, outlook and just, um, you know, life purposes and enjoy our travel. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right, and that, guys. And that's, that's it. I, I, I will say just people, you know, Again, when I try to convert you, whether you want to be a Christian, not a Christian, I totally get that. Right. That's your life decision. But if you are a Christian and you're not tithing, um, I'm going to employ you to, to really read and study on just that topic. I can't right. tell you, I mean, and I'm not going to go through stories, but I, I can't tell you how many times I know because I tithe, I've made it through. I'm an mm -hmm. entrepreneur just like, just like many other people. So those first couple of years were hard, okay? I remember one month, my entire, now mind you, I have a family, I've got two kids, house bills, all this sort of stuff. My entire income for the month was $600. I still tied, <laughs> okay? Wow. And somehow we still made it through, okay? Right. So I will tell you, you know, time and time and time again, when I didn't know how it was going to come through, somehow God made it come through. And I know it right. because I was faithful in the tithe. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So on that note, um, we are two minutes beyond. So I'm just going to say thank you to Christine, Christina. And then as always, guys, uh, we will be putting her information in the comment field. If you want to reach out to her, feel free to do so. And um, again, I am also uh, a coach for coaching you upward. And I will drop that also within the comments field. And thank you for your participation. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. And again, you feel free to um, share the video and um, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. And Christina, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ms. Judy. And I appreciate you so much. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.